Brigham Avery, host of Hollywood and Ivy. I'm here with Joe Montaigne. We're at spring training today. Have you ever been to spring training I've before? I've never been to spring training. What a thrill. I mean, it's like being at the mini Wrigley Field. It's a great day, beautiful day in Mesa, Arizona. I'm wearing my Mojo Championship ring. I've got my Ron Santo, Ernie Banks shirt on. It's just been a great day. He's ready to go. And I'll tell you, Joe, the great thing is you can be anything you want at spring training. You can be a reporter. You can be a player, celebrity fan, a lot right. of things. A lot of right? things. I even did batting practice, and I even got a couple out of the infield. Amazing. So please join us as we go inside spring training 2023 on Hollywood and Ivy. Go Cubs. Go Cubs. at spring training 2023 we got somebody very important and special manager david ross thanks so much for being here thanks for having me good to talk to you guys oh great great to have you here david so joe plays your character the italian version of your care of you on on criminal minds right he was just saying that's right i've been, play, I've been playing the character david rossi for like well 16 years now and I, I think of myself as the Italian version of David Ross. I mean, it's, it's, it's perfect. Do you get a lot of Rossi's traveling around? I get Rossi all the time. I think that's the only people. Either Grandpa around here, Grandpa Rossi, or, or just oh, Rossi. Perfect, so, yeah, perfect, yeah. yeah. So that's a, if they start asking you any questions about the FBI, though, you just know that, <laughs> that, that that's the reason. I'm going to pass because, that along to you. Yeah, yeah you pass it on to me. And if anyone asks me tips on the Cubs, I'm going to pass it on to you. <laughs> okay. Right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll compare notes afterwards. Very good. So, Skipper, 2023, big additions to the team, Bellinger. Uh, Dansby Swanson, what are your thoughts so far? How are you guys looking? Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of winners. You know, we got uh, Trey Mancini, Eric Hosmer, um, like you said, the guys you mentioned. You know, the, I look around and it's just very clear these guys are established major league players. Their routines, the way they go about their business, the way they carry themselves. They've got um, just that poise in spring training, knowing not to get too high, not to get too low. They're preparing uh, for the season and opening day. Uh, really excited to have them all. Dansby, obviously, big addition, a lot of money in the offseason, going out, establishing a guy that uh, has been a part of winning, won gold gloves, um, just a true pro. He, he's all about the details, the things that matter in winning, the smaller things that make the difference when you get a little bit of time and you, you, you've made a career for yourself, you've won, now you're just about the little details. He's all about that. Taking it from me, like somebody whose mother lived to be 101 years old, and thank God the Cubs won the World Series when she turned 100. Because I, I remember when, when, during that season, I remember t t telling, I'd be, I would be doing these interviews and I'd say, please, boys, she's 100 years old, close the deal now. And when they did, I thought to myself, so the onus is off. And that's great. That's that thing that's been hanging over us Cub fans you sure. know, for all those years. That's gone. That's done. You guys can just you know play baseball without that little thing hanging over your head. Yeah. Well, the the one thing, first of all, the best thing I like to hear about that is everybody's stories. Well, where they were, what was going on. It's kind of my, my highlight when I travel and, and run into Cubs fans. But to your point, what I love is the expectations that were created after that. Right. The 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 Rizzo, the Bryant's, that 15, 16 group, and and then winning after that created an expectation to win. And and I think we've established here this is a winning organization and. That's what we're about. That's why I'm here. That's why these guys are here, why we go out and get these winners, is because we expect world championship caliber baseball, and we want to get back into the postseason, get back on those uh, historic runs, do something special, create history as a group of men. All these guys, that's why we do these drills. That's why we set on a mission here in spring training to take this journey together, and um, there's nothing more special than those moments in my life and and that's what i want to be a part of and i know that's what this group wants to be a part of I want to see wrigley rocking again with the in the world series yes. series uh yes. series games and uh have that environment back in chicago you're 39 and 31 in the second half of the season how do you build on that going into 2023 what momentum does that bring well uh, some guys establish themselves as real frontline pitchers we got we got our starters rotation uh, rotation healthy uh some guys came along javier assad uh, you, you look at Hayden Wisniewski in the trade. We got some bullpen pieces that really stepped up at the back end of the season. We got some timely hits, some things that we worked on and identified, hey, this is what we want to be about in the second half. These are the details we want to focus on that can contribute to winning, whether it's button, hit and run, the fundamentally sound, uh, throwing to the right bases, outfielders, just the little details that matter. Keep one run uh, off the board from, from the opposition. And um, they put those things in place. We identified them. The guys worked on them. And they, they're the ones that went out and did it. So some guys put themselves on the map. 
that, we got to go back and do it. Brandon Hughes, one of those guys, um, really established himself, came out of nowhere as a bullpen guy, lefty. Um, but we got to go do it again. We got to continue to get better. And all those guys are on that mission now. And um, that's what we're looking forward to. We had some good additions that should help us continue on that trajectory. We ask every guest on our show, don't we, Joe? Where were you in 2016? And it's an amazing way in the dugout. of rebuilding. Yes, that's right. We're all there. But you were there, and you hit a home run in Game 7 of the World Series. How special was that for you, Skipper, playing a special role in rewriting history? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, you know, uh, I try to put those uh, memories behind me now that I'm the manager, and we're trying to do that stuff again. But, um, yeah, it was a special home run for sure. The special time in my life um, when you're able to create history with a group of men and do something special. There's a bond of... Uh, I have with that group, those brothers, uh, that coaching staff, um, they'll never go away and there's nothing um, more special than doing something like that. And I think that's what fuels me daily is in why I have this job and, and what I want to accomplish out of this job is do those things again. And um, yeah, the home run's great. Um, I don't know how I did it, but I did it. It was, it was nice. Hey, hey, David, you hit you hit a home run in, the, in Game Seven of the World Series that the Cubs won. You are a god now and forever. Well, I appreciate that. It was a special, special time. That home run. Uh, I remember Rajay Davis running back. I thought he was going to try to rob it and went out. And I, I think my body went numb for a minute. And uh, as I was rounding the bases, but uh, yeah, special time, special moment, special memories. I love hearing these stories from everybody, where they're at, what they were feeling, uh, what they thought about when we hit that home run, and. Um, you know, it was a special time in my life, and uh, I want to get back to more stories like those. I'm going to tell you one little brief story where I was. We had a restaurant in Burbank, California, my wife and I called Taste Chicago at the time. So, so we had the, the restaurant was full with Chicago fans. So here it was. I, I, I was getting so nervous I couldn't watch the game in the restaurant with the rest of the fans. So I went into the into the Fox News truck, and I'm watching it on a little black and white TV all by myself. And the only guys in there are the engineers, who I think were probably Dodger fans. They could care less about the game. So what happened is that last out happened. I, I realized the Cubs have won the World Series. I open up the door to the trailer, and the restaurant is dead silent. Nothing. It's just yeah, like... I hadn't seen it yet. It was dead silent, and I'm thinking it was all a dream. It didn't happen. <laughs> this, I'm dreaming the whole thing. All of a sudden, the restaurant erupts. You know, people are running out the door, champagne's flying. I turn around, and the guys in the truck look at me and calmly say, oh, yeah, we're on a 15-second delay. And I thought to myself, great, I saw the Cubs win the World Series 15 seconds before everybody else in the country, <laughs> unless you happen to be at the game. So anyway, that's the, memory I'll, that's the memory I'll remember. Special story, yeah. I remember that last out uh, pretty vividly. Um, I remember getting my cleats caught in the, the fencing while I was trying to trying to uh, rush the field after oh, that. You and Bryant out. both. Bryant got his cleat. That was going around yeah, that Yeah, he right? was there. I guess so. I, well, I was the old guy trying to get over the, uh, the like, four-foot four little fence <laughs> there and uh, couldn't get out there to celebrate with the boys. But uh, what a special moment, special special time, and, and I think a lot of Cubs fans' life, my life especially, those guys, um, good story. That, that's Those are things that, that, that make it all. It's not – it is, it is the memories, but it's hearing everybody else's story. It's hearing where everybody was, what they were thinking, and how they were celebrating, who they were celebrating with, the lineage that comes along with being a Cubs fan. Those are the things that hit me in the heart still uh, to today. And how do you how do you scout out the division in 2023? Yeah, we're going to compete. I think um, you know the Cardinals are good. They're the ones on top. They they establish it. I always want to give credit where credits due. They they won it last year, and uh, we're going to put our best foot forward. We play them over in London this year, which is really exciting. Going to take that trip. I've never been over there, so um, we know that they're good. They've got one of our former players, a catcher, who's a really good player. They've got some young kids coming uh, for additions, but I don't make too many predictions in this game. I know it, it doesn't make any sense to. Um, so we're going to go out and compete and our, our tails off and try to represent this this uniform uh, in the best way we possibly can. Well, thank you for representing yourself on this show. You've been outstanding. David Ross, the manager of the Cubs, thank you so you much. You got it. Absolutely. David. Hollywood and Ivy. You, you, you're doing my fantasy job. You know, like if I couldn't have been an actor, but, so what could you have been in life? I said, well, like if, I, if I could hit, I, 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 was, I was all field, no hit. And like, and like, you know, I played baseball as a kid. Sure. I said I was left fielder, but terrible with the bat. You know. <laughs> that's how we were. We were all field, no hit, yeah. too. Yeah, that's, that's why that's we're okay. coaching And now. you're still working, though. This is <laughs> it's good. It's easy to be a coach yeah. in the, out to the place. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. I, I would and need I'll every throw, tip I'll in the world. I'll throw it as hard as you want it, okay? Yeah, I, I want it. That's the key. As, you can put, put, you put plenty of arc on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Ernie Banks. Yeah. Oh, great. 
That's it. That was great. Everybody stick around. We'll be back with more live from spring training with Joe Montaigne on Hollywood and Ivy. And if you think that segment was good, wait till you see the next one. Go Cubs. Kyle Hendricks to the Cubs, welcome. I'm trying to keep up with you guys. You were so instrumental in not only getting us to the big to the big game, to the, to the big series there, but also closing the deal. So you, being a Cub fan for over 70 years, you are a god to me. Oh, so thank please. you, thank oh, you for that. Thank you so much. Thank now, you so now much. We can I'm continue. not even close. Okay. Now we yeah, can yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. Now we can get on. How does, thank how does you the so rotation much. look in 2023, Kyle? You're oh, anchoring it. You're number one. What I'm are your a, thoughts? Yeah, you know, I'm going to be a little late to season, so we got we got a bunch of aces though on this team. I think Stro, Jamison Tyone, a uh, guy we just signed, Steely, the what he did last year for us. He's going to be amazing, unbelievable. Sign back Drew Smiley. He's going to be a huge piece for us. We just we have so much depth. The options that we have to start the year for the fifth spot, we just have we have so many guys that can plug into the rotation. We're gonna have to use them all year long, so it's it's a different year than it's been in the past. We have so many good arms, so many good good players in general. On the position player side, all the guys that we signed, obviously starting with Dansby, but just so many winners, you know, so many good people, but so many winners, and that's what you have to surround yourself with if that's what you're trying to do. And so it's just been a fun camp. Been a really fun camp. It's been a lot different. Uh, the energy's been way up, and I know we're going to win a ton of games this That's year. That's it. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. Would you say you're the linchpin of a lot of things here, Kyle, being in 2016 that you started Game 7 of the World Series, and also in 2016 you won the pennant clinching victory against the Dodgers. That brings a lot of, uh, I would say, baseball street cred to the clubhouse. Would you not agree, yeah. sir? I, re I really appreciate you saying that, you know. I, it, to me, that seems like a long time ago. You know, I know to Cubs fans, uh, we hang our hat on that one, and it was amazing mo an amazing moment for us. But, again, our focus, we have so many good players in this clubhouse right now. I think it's going to be a special yeah. group. No, and for we're Cubs fans, 1908 was a long time ago. It was a long time ago, right? I don't really is, remember. Well, <laughs> you, your thing was just like yesterday okay, for us, so okay. That's, that's okay. Deal, I like you that. And guy, you guys like you and Ross, that you know, the fact that you're you're still there and it's like unbelievable yeah, for thank us. you so much no you can still feel it i love being around rossi every day you know it's really special to have that connection with him and have that winning connection you'll never you know you'll never have that again with any anybody else you know joe brings a lot of great karma to cubs pictures he threw out the first pitch may 6 1998 when carrie wood struck out 20. Really? you're talking to us now i, I think we're going to send you karma to win the cy young in 2023 Please. we're going to say there you go okay that's right Please. absolutely i need it all i need all you got because it was you know it was just it was a rainy thursday wow. they were playing the astros yeah. I happened to be in town. They said, "Hey, Joe, you want to throw the first pitch?" And I get there. Who knew? Are and you I had and I had me? and I had Kerry sign and date the ball, and I, that sits in my office. That's and it, unbelievable. That's, that's, that's a Hall of Fame ball. Of course, you know. So, that's so special. So that's unbelievable. I, I, that I'm, that I, I see that opportunity okay. coming with you, you know, Kyle. Absolutely. You come out, throw out the first pitch for me. We'll get twenty punches. You got it. Now you got we're it. Talking. All right, absolutely. Now yeah. we're talking. Yeah. You heard it here, yeah. folks. You heard it here. Kyle Hendricks, Hollywood Navy. Thanks so much. One last thing. How do you look forward to competing against the Brewers and the Cardinals in that division? A tough couple customers. What do you look forward to most about competing against them and Wilson Contreras, Absolutely. now a Cardinal. Absolutely. Our division's always tough. You know that our division's always close at the top there, starting with St. Louis and Milwaukee. You know, they're going to be two really good squads, but we love those rivalries. We love playing against those teams. It heightens your energy, heightens your focus. Uh, you bring a little bit more to it, you know, and those are the teams we love beating. So I love that Wilson's over there. You know, he's so close to me. He's one of my best friends. So it's going to be good to see him, uh, mm -hmm. you know, more often than, than other teams. But I don't want to see him too much, obviously. Right. You, know, right. you don't Especially, want to see him too yeah. much. Exactly. Yeah, we Make don't want to sure see him in the postseason. You want exactly. to see you yeah. in the postseason. See him in the regular season. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be good enough right for us. All right. There you yeah. go. Absolutely. Yeah. Kyle Hendricks, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. President of Baseball Operations, Jed Hoyer, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, great to have you guys here. It's awesome, Absolutely. isn't it? It's a perfect day. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the squad so far? Great new additions, looking good in oh, 23. Thank you. It's been an awesome vibe in camp so far. Uh, Rossi does a great job with this group. Um, I think it's a group that's going to really come together well. And um, so everything's been great so far. And like I said, let's just keep the trainers away and we'll be happy. What you've put together here is just seems terrific. And, you know, on we go to hopefully that, that you know, forget that 108 years. Then the next one's going to come a lot sooner than that. Yeah, you know, I, I felt like when I, when I was in Boston, we, we, you know, we had 86 years. No one ever believed you could win the World Series. We did it, and then it changed the perception of, of, of Red Sox baseball. I feel the same way about the Cubs is that, you know, now I feel like if we have the right team, no one's going to feel like, oh, we can't do it. There's no curse. Bad things aren't going to happen. And I think that makes a big difference for the mentality of a fan base. 
Absolutely. The onus is off. Now it's just, just, exactly. just go out there, play, and, uh, you know. And I can see already that you're the right guy to be kind of holding the reins as you do now. And, I mean, uh, I appreciate I it. feel it's, it's so been, optimistic about it. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's um, it's been a dream come true for me. I mean, this is like such an incredible organization. I grew up in New Hampshire, but I remember, you know, going to games and seeing my friends in Chicago in my 20s and thinking, like, this is the most magical place. So I definitely pinch myself coming to work every day and realizing that I get to do this with the Cubs and go to work at Wrigley Field every day. It doesn't get doesn't get better than that. No, it doesn't. Well, you, you knew Fenway and now you and, yeah, and, and now been, you know I've, Wrigley. I've been fortunate. That You've way. been to the two the, the, yeah. the, the two shrines of baseball. Yeah, exactly. And you talked about Jed growing up in New Hampshire. It's amazing. There really is, and there was before we won our championships, a camaraderie between Boston and Chicago fans because we were so long suffering. Yes. Really, Red Sox and Cub fans. So it's yeah. amazing that you understood us and now you're part of this. And yeah, it's really I mean, it, great. it was. Um, I grew up with this idea that you, you, it couldn't happen. You know, I, I was I was a kid. I guess I was probably 12 years old uh, when the ball went through Buckner's legs, yeah. and you know, live, went you know, went through that experience. And so, as a kid, it was always like it can't happen. And then, you know, we realized, in, you know, in, in 04 that it can. And so, I do think Theo and I brought that attitude here, where you know, we knew that if you had the right team and the right group of guys, I think that was the biggest part of it. That I look back on the group of players that won it in 04. Um, you know, they were the idiots and they, yeah. they were, the, you know, they, they, you know, very uh, carefree and loose mm -hmm. and could not be bothered with curses. And or being like, down 0-3 yeah. the Yankees, right? And I feel like the group we had here was just an incredible group of guys that rallied together during the rain delay. And I think those two groups, um, I think it took a tough mental group of guys to do it because you're, you're up against the opponent and you're also up against this weird uh, belief that it couldn't happen. So I do think the two groups that won it uh, don't surprise me when you look back. Like that was the, the kind of group that needed to to, over, to be able to overcome that kind of um, mojo, so to speak. Right, right. This is a, a kind of a small ball team you have. You have a couple of power hits, but you got yeah. a lot of speed at the top of the lineup. It looks like it's built perfectly for Wrigley Field. Was that your vision when you built this team is to customize it for the ballpark? I'd like to have a little bit more power, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. but I do love our defense up the middle. I think we'll steal bases. We'll, we'll take care of the ball really well. I think that we'll pitch well this year. So I do think, like, I love the makeup of this group. I will say going forward, I think having a few more guys that, you know, hit the ball in the seats would be nice. That's what the July 31st deadline's for. Exactly. Absolutely. Hey, I exactly. did batting practice earlier. I was hitting it pretty good for an old guy. You were? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know July if I'm 31st. the power solution for you guys, yeah. but, you know. Uh, what was your best bolt? How far did it go? Uh, uh, 450 just, feet. Yeah, no. Maybe, yeah, no one saw over, it. Yeah, just over third base. Nice. That's Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, just to, speaking of New Englanders, Joe went on Nightline with Ben Affleck, Jed, and talked about who suffered more. And I yeah. think it was before the Red Sox actually won, so it was kind of a who suffered more, Red Sox or Cup fans. Yes, it was. I, think you it was, won that was argument, I said, did because well, the first, Buckner come well, from, the first right? yeah, the first yeah. thing he said to me, he says, "Yeah, what about Buckner?" I says, "What about Buckner? Buckner yeah. came from the Cubs. Yeah, What's the matter with you? Don't, don't you. talk to me about suffering." <laughs> well, thank God he and I both I were it. able to get that satisfaction. And, I love it. And that, that, that's old news. We don't care about it anymore. Exactly. It's done. And now, now we're just a. A team that plays in the best city with the best fan base with an Absolutely. incredible ballpark. You know? exactly. Yes, the most passionate exactly right. fans. But we don't have that monkey on our back, which is great. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've been great, Jed. Thank you so much for being here. I loved it. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for the support. <laughs>so great to be here because look at this place it's, it's like, amazing it's like a mini look at this. oh my goodness it's my first I'm time here field. i purposely waited till today to come up and step on the field for the first time if you squint you can almost see like make, you can make the ivy uh, right almost make the ivy yeah this is fantastic what are okay. your thoughts before the first pitch are you nervous I, you anticipating no no what am i going to be nervous about i'm ready i'm as ready as i'm ever going to be all might, right. Might be a knuckleball. I've been, yeah. I've been hanging out with a knuckleball pitcher. That's right, Kyle Hendricks. You met him earlier. Split finger, fastball, curve, high heat. Maybe medium high heat. Maybe medium, maybe low heat. 
How about simmer? There'll be a lot of arc on it, but I'll get it there. Very I'll nice. Get it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We deliver everything for you, Cub fans. Joe Montana, first pitch coming up on Hollywood and Ivy. Go Cubs. Go Cubs. I'm going to the mall. to do that. You gotta bounce it in. Hollywood and Ivy live from spring training. Brigham Avery, Joe Montaigne. Look who we have. Fergie Jenkins. The great the, Fergie Jenkins. The Cooperstown Cub. Thank you for being here, uh, Fergie. My pleasure. What are your thoughts of the pitching staff so far? Uh, they've thrown seen? pretty good. I've watched uh, like six ball games. Uh, they're getting their self in shape and that's yeah. what it's all about. Spring training, the six weeks to, to finalize what you got to do once you head north. This is a place to get in great shape. What's your fondest memory of being at Cub Fergie? What do you remember most about your time in Cub Pinstripes? <laughs> wow. Coming over here, and uh, especially in a Cub uniform and winning 20 games for the first year with all the guys that I, I mentioned, along with Kessinger Becker, and then having an opportunity. Leo DeRoche was a great manager for me. He left me in ball games, and I had a chance to complete a lot of games, and I put a string of 20 games together. Man. I really enjoyed that. How many games can they win? Can they win the division? Well, that's what they got to try to do. I think Milwaukee's pretty strong. I think if they can win 85 to 90 games, win that division, they've got some hitting. They got a lot of new lineup hitters that are out there displaying themselves now. So, you know, Cody's a pretty good hitter. They got him from the Dodgers. They got a couple other players they got from other teams. But I think if they put it all together, they got a good shot to win that division. So you went and saw Bleacher Bums. You went to a live production. Oh, Is yes, that right? They did. There you go. What was that like? Seeing the guys, and, and, and being a, that I was on the team at the time and seeing the guys that actually did it, when you see it on TV, you say to yourself, these guys knew what they were doing. <laughs> they knew what they were doing. Yeah. Did, it, did Joe do a good job of encapsulating the I, Cub fans and representing the spirit? I think all he the, did. Yeah. The only thing, they didn't have a trumpet player. Murphy was the trumpet oh, player. Oh, yeah. yeah trumpet That's player. true. Mike Murphy. Well, we, had, we had Ronnie Woo represented, oh, though. Ronnie we Wubu, did, a, we did a lot okay. of Cubbies. Woo, Cubbies, woo, Cubbies, woo. Yeah. Was the basket there in 69, or did they put uh, that in? That came in. We went on the road. We came back. That basket was there, yeah. and a lot. I've given up home runs in that basket. I didn't like it. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah but, well, part, but it was part of the game. Then. You didn't give up that many, for No, you you're right. No, 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 no. Guys like you are the reason I've been a Cub fan for over 70 years. Beautiful. God bless you, man. My it's pleasure. a privilege Thanks. to know you. And it is now time for the stretch. Please direct your attention to the area in front of the Cubs dugout. And join actor and Chicago native Joe Montagna in singing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." As the great, late Harry Carey would say, before we get some runs, let's hear it. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if we ever get back to Will Root. Root, root for the You're out at the old. 
<laughs> they give me an Oscar, but I think we did all right. Yeah. I see better than a throw. Let's put it That's that right. way. Boy, what an amazing episode, Joe, wasn't it? That was terrific. You know, I got to do some batting practice. We got to interview players. We got to interview the manager. We got to interview Hall of Famers. And we're here in Mesa, Arizona, spring training, Chicago Cubs. What could be better? How about that tailgate experience over there? Wasn't that great? Tailgate experience. I have had enough Chicago dogs. I'm like up to here in Vienna. He's Pink. full, full of Chicago. We thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, go, go Cubs! Cubs. Hollywood Navi is a presentation of Brigham Avery Productions.